Hi, everyone. My name is Nancy Burrell, and I've been teaching at Revere High School for 20 years. Revere is a low-income urban school system. About 80% of our students receive free or reduced lunch, meaning they live at or below the poverty level. We're also a gateway community, so many of our students are English language learners. So over the years, I've had some degree of success with my students, and I'm often asked what training and education provided me with the skills necessary to be an effective teacher. And I have to say, despite uh, multiple degrees and years of schooling and hours and hours of professional development, that punk rock really <laughs> enabled me to connect with my students and to help my students as much as any teacher training program. I came of age in the late 1970s and early 80s in Philadelphia, a historic time for music. Through punk rock, I learned how to connect with and to reach and to understand the disenfranchised and marginalized teen, mainly because I was one. <laughs> and so were my friends. <laughs> punk rock showed me the power of self-expression through language. And I often encourage my students to tap into that power of language to uh, show anger and joy, and of course, to change the world. Back then, we created little Xerox self-published fanzines where we wrote about our politics and our views on social issues, and of course, music. That act of sharing our perspectives changed us. So when Will and Rawlings and Jose and Alfredo came to me and told me about their experiences as, as young men of color, I encouraged them to speak out. The boys' essays were published by the College Board, and they went on to do a national webinar entitled Transforming the Educational Experience of Young Men of Color. And they also presented at the College Board Regional Forum. And they never dreamed that that act of speaking out would be so powerful. Along the way, I met some cool people like this guy. And I was also introduced to a very diverse and multicultural world. Um, and I started to realize the power of music and art to break down racial, ethnic, and class barriers. The punk rock creed that I subscribed to railed against any kind of racism, prejudice, or hatred of any kind. And so when I visited Boston for the very first time to see my boyfriend, who is now my husband, we decided that we were going to protest a Ku Klux Klan rally that was taking place on Boston City Hall. The, a fight broke out in front of me, and my picture was taken, and I ended up on the front page of the New York Times. I don't even think my parents knew that I was in Boston that day. <laughs> And so, as a teacher, I try to create assignments that ask my students to take a stand despite conflicting data or complicated politics or intense societal pressure. I want to equip them with the skills to be able to examine perspectives and cultures and to comprehend and critique and to think independently. That do-it-yourself work ethic that was so vital to me in the 1980s now helps me in my classroom getting resources and knocking down walls and refusing to accept no when it comes to my students. And then my students see me doing this and they learn to live by the example. In the day when I wanted to see bands that I loved but I couldn't because they weren't playing in huge stadiums or they were playing in nightclubs that I was too young to enter, I would rent Elk Centers and Knights of Columbus Halls, and I would call bands from all over the world to play shows. In fact, that's how I met my husband of 32 years. He was busy popularizing and spreading the word of Straight Edge, an anti-drinking, anti-drug coda that still lives on today. And so, as I said, I wanted my students to see this exa uh, uh, by example. And so, m when my student, Kais, who was an, uh, an immigrant from Afghanistan, decided he wanted to go to prep school, he applied to several schools and he was accepted, but he received no financial aid at all, despite the fact that his dad was disabled as a result of a severe beating by the Taliban and his mother had a very low-paying job. 
So I told Caiz to persevere and not give up. And he barraged them. He called, he emailed, he talked to alumni and to trustees and to coaches. And he did that straight through the summer. And one week before school started, he received a scholarship for $41,000. And he thrived at that school. Punk Rock also taught me not to be manipulated for the sake of someone else's personal agenda. Even, even at this age, and because of Punk Rock, I still question authority, a fact that gets me in trouble quite a bit. <laughs> However, I refuse to be controlled and, and to have somebody attempt to compromise my integrity or the integrity of my students for themselves. In my classroom, punk rock still lives. OK, so you don't have a punk rock past, right? <laughs> All right, well, how can you tap into your past experiences and your passions to become a more powerful teacher? Doreen, um, who is my colleague, she's a health and physical edu education teacher at my school, but she's also a ninth degree black belt in Kempo Karate. She is the highest ranked woman in the world in that particular art form, a fact that definitely impresses her students. She credits karate with helping her reach her English language learners, and her calm, cool demeanor as a martial artist definitely has served her well in an urban public school. And then my colleague Allison was very shy and introverted. Her job as a bartender called upon her to frequently perform and to talk to different people from all over the world, and she transferred those skills back to her classroom. And then there's travel. My former AP student and now colleague Dan was shocked when he was accepted to Harvard University. There he learned how to speak two languages and moved halfway across the world. Dan often uses himself as an example for our Revere students to show them that, hey, look, a kid from Revere can indeed go places. And so how can this work for you? Well, first, what did the hobby or experience require of you? And how can you transfer those skills and dispositions to your students? How did you find and contribute to the community of people sharing your experience or passion? My colleague Colleen is a special education teacher, but she also runs a CrossFit studio in the community. And that's enabled her to build community relationships and to connect with parents and family. And how can you use your hobbies and passions and past experiences to nourish your physical and emotional and mental health? Never underestimate their power to help you to cope with frustrations and burnout every day. Share your school experiences to deepen your relationship with students. Students love teachers who present themselves as teacher and teacher and marathon runner, like my student, my uh, former colleague, Katie, or teacher and guitar player, like my colleague, Antonio. And then if you can help your students develop their passions and their hobbies, then you are creating a whole new dimension in their life that will truly add value for them. So back in the 1980s, you know, I never thought that I'd reach my goal as teacher. You know, punk rock to teaching is probably not the usual trajectory. <laughs> However, I can tell you that for me, I would not be the teacher that I am today if it were not for punk rock. Um, and so my lesson to you is to tap into those past experiences and tap into uh, your passions and your hobbies. I never dreamed I'd still be drawing on punk rock 32 years later, but I have to say that punk rock has indeed made me a better teacher. Thank you. Thank you.